Okay, so we have one question, which is a great question. So I'm going to answer it here. Alina says, how can I clear a sorrow field which showed up just after the meditation? So this applies to any field of energy, rage, anger, sadness, um, grief, or even just like static. Um, so usually if we feel that, it's probably reverberating. So if it is a collective energy, then um, oftentimes is reverberating off that frequency that's in our body. So there's a part of ourself that is feeling sorrow. And so that energy is stored somewhere <clears throat> inside of our body. Um, so this is where the expedited, the Pashna meditation really becomes a great tool. So what I do is I, you know, close my eyes and I'll breathe and I'll just feel the air coming in and out of my nose, you know, how it's warm and then cold. And I'll just focus on that because it brings me into connection with the subtle reality. And so if you are kind of experienced in feeling energy, um, then, you know, it takes less time to breathe and focus on your nose. But if you feel like you don't feel energy as easily, then I would just focus on breathing and feeling the warmth and the coldness of your nose. And you could do that for weeks and eventually you will become uh, subtly aware of energy. But um, then when I have developed, when I'm in that space and I feel like Alina, you are pretty energetically sensitive. So you know, once you've connected into the subtle energy reality, I usually just start to send my awareness down because our belly and our lower belly is usually where we store. It's kind of like where the dense energy like falls down and like coagulates at the bottom. So um, if there's a specific energy like this um, grief or the sorrow that you're talking about, you can intend to say like, okay, I send like almost a sonar wave out from my consciousness. I just scan for that energy and it'll bounce back. So from where I'm sensing that it is actually in the solar plexus area. And it's actually, I it feels like powerlessness. It's coming from powerlessness or a sense of it. So then um, what I do is I move into my belly and I'll just pretend like it's a fish tank or a body of water. And I'll see that there are kind of pockets of mud that are in my lower belly. And so I'll just penetrate and move my awareness into that pocket of mud. And what happens is that pocket of mud is the coagulation or the collect, um, collected emotional energy that has been stored or stuck in our body. So when I move my awareness into it and start breathing, that pocket of energy is going to start to move and release. And that's when you have you know, a cry or you can just breathe and kind of really feel that energy until it dissipates and neutralizes. Um, so that's kind of the practice that we do. And as I said, if you're, um, there's this thing that I do called proactive healing, where you can basically do this practice and then the reality won't trigger you anymore because you'll be ahead of yourself in your healing. So for example, if you are about to, if the universe is about to like give you an experience to help you process grief like next week, but if you already processed, processed it in your body, then that triggering event is less likely to happen because it didn't, it wouldn't have to happen anymore because you already processed the energy that that event was going to help you process. So you know, for example, like if you have an anger issue and then you were going to like lose your keys to trigger you to feel really upset or something. But if you process the anger, then you wouldn't lose your keys because the universe wouldn't have to force you to do things because you've already done it. So, being ahead of the karma. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it takes some time to get into it, but like I said, like at this point, 
if we have the time, three hours of clearing work is really not like too much because um, all of the Tibetan, you know, teachers will say that we are connected to everything and that, you know, all of the chaos that's happening outside of ourselves in the world is because, you know, we have that chaos inside. Now, I think that we were tricked into having all this chaos inside so that we will create a world that feeds parasites. But, you know, cause and effect don't matter so much as the fact that we have a lot of chaos inside and out and we need to process that. And that's, it doesn't really matter like why or what or how that's happened so much as accepting that it has and taking responsibility. <laughs> 